things are about to get more interesting now that we are going to use more and more machine learning on top of the data that we have already collected. That's the part three, issue detection on the AI or this on this AI op series. So issue detection, um, we have reduced the noise. We know how to reduce the noise. We know, we know how to focus our data in what matters. What about uh, if I had a way to know if a behavior of a system is normal or not without actually having to tell um, my platform right uh, what a normal behavior is and by the way elastic can do both things right we are talking about we're going to cover unsupervised machine learning that means i don't need to tell um, what the good state or bad state is that's more of a supervised machine learning technique that we can also do with Elastic, but we are going to focus on a supervised machine learning. I'm going to show you a couple things in there. Let's let's recap. Our um, our demo is in there with 11 microservices. We are collecting traces. We are collecting all the methods that are being called, system calls, and everything inside that uh, environment. We are collecting logs that are written by those services, the messages, right? Um, user X did Y, right? That's a, that's a log message. Um, order dispatched, right? Email sent, something like that. Those are all valuable messages, lots of noise, obviously, um, but we have a way to actually transform that to a metric and that that and that's that's really interesting um, we also collect metrics classic metrics like cpu memory disk network activity right uh, those are the classic ones uh, and we are also collecting logs and metrics from the system itself from kubernetes we are using our elastic agent now let's make that data work for us let's do that so i'm going to enable in machine learning so I'll, I'll, I'll don't have anything right there elastic telling that i have a one gigabyte node with that with that single one gigabyte node which is free by the way um, I'm going to create a couple machine learning jobs to analyze the data that are coming in. And I can do that uh, with a click. I can let, 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 let's go first to APM and I'll see that on top of that. I have anomaly detection in there, right? That's, those are all my services. They are up and running for a couple days now. And I'm going to activate anomaly detection in there, right? Create ML job. I will select, um, I could have in here, development, production, Q&A, whatever you say your environment is, even local, um, local environments, right? If you have several developers working in a project, they can all ship that data uh, using OpenTelemetry or the APM, Elastic APM engines to this cluster. And you just need to set the environment variable that will tell uh, what environment this is, right? I'm going to select uh, whatever is not defined and production as well. And I'll create jobs and that's it. So for APM, and yeah, so anomaly detection jobs are created. What I'm going to have in here, 
is that when I click um, a service, I will have expected bounds in there. Let's go back to the last seven days. Expected bounds. Ah, you see? It was pretty quick. So I'll ha I have some anomalies in there already. So that's probably an issue with my front end. Mm, okay. So the normal, the expected bounds are the light blue one. That's the statistical model the machine learning module is creating uh, in the background based on the actual data series. So if you see in here, we have an average, pretty regular average on 13 milliseconds of latency for that specific service. Uh, and it just went up. We have a bump in there of 155 milliseconds. And you see that that affects the model as well. You see that the model is trying to adjust with uh, with with what it has seen in the past, right? So uh, our bounds are uh, adjusted. Of course, we don't have a lot of data in here, but if that um, if that series is like periodic, we would see the model adjusting perfectly on that. Uh, on that uh, time series. We have the throughput in there. It's still running. Then failed transaction rate, we have it in here. Normally, it should fail 0%. Uh, <laughs> and then we got and then we got 18%. I can't zoom in. So that's that's a, probably an issue in there. Why is it failing? We can see in root cause analysis. That's not the that's not the, um, the goal right now. Are just surfacing issues in there, right? So it's not normal. Uh, the failed transaction rate is uh, at 16%, right? Good. So that's for APM. We also can, and then let, let me go back to actually machine learning in there. All my jobs will be listed in, the, in here. The APM, this is still running. November 22, yeah, two days ago. Um, that's still running. It's still analyzing everything from, from, from the historical data. I guess I have three or four days in there. So the jobs will be listed in here. Let's go back to infrastructure where I will see the nodes in there. I don't know if you can actually see, yeah, because my frame is on top of it. But anyway, I have inventory in here. Um, and I also have the anomaly detection button. Let's enable that for hosts, whatever host I'm, I'm, I am uh, collecting info from. Um, and then I will use uh, the partition field, maybe the host name, enable jobs. So it will create one model per host. It will be independent. So if a host normally consumes more memory, uh, you will not get the same alerts on one that consumes less memory, for instance, when this one that consumes a lot suddenly jump uh, uh, a little bit over the, the threshold. So we will have different thresholds for different hosts. That the, that's the, the idea. And Kubernetes pods. I'm going to do here. I'll actually separate by container name. If that doesn't work out, and, that, and that's something that you can try as well. If container name is not a good partition field, it, you saw you saw that uh, the default partition field was by namespace. You can have several applications separated by namespace. They will be independent. In my case, I just have one namespace. It might make uh, sense for your data or might not. 
Uh, let's try with container name. If that doesn't work, you can just delete the job and recreate it. It's, it's just, just as simple as that. And I'm going to, since I have like four days worth of data, maybe, yeah, maybe I'll start around here instead of all the way back. This cluster is running for much longer than that application. So I could also filter, could just uh, reduce even further that data. Uh, but it's not necessarily needed. Okay, so enabled machine learning for everything now. Um, so this is going to enable, uh, this is going to enable uh, machine learning on top of metrics such as CPU, memory and network so the classic metrics right you should be monitoring this anyway uh, but that's a uh, there there is a different way you can also surface issues in your service which is in your services which is uh, transforming the occurrence of certain log lines into a metric uh, and then you can use machine learning to tell you uh, if, for instance, payments are going through or not. So that's that's a different type of metric, a very specific type of metric to my system. So it's an e-commerce. Uh, it's an important metric. Uh, and I can track that just as uh, just as easy with machine learning in, in Elastic. But Let's let's explore the classic metrics first, and then I'll get to ex to the to the to the exciting one for me at least. And I've seen I have seen lots of customers using that 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 second way, uh, that custom way, um, over the years. Okay, so the classic metrics. So you have it in here. Hosts already we have enabled uh, uh, for metrics for hosts we have lots of anomalies in there we have enabled it for kubernetes uh, and then we have a couple system metrics in there and we also have apm so we have those four machine learning jobs which are uh, out of the box jobs and i can just uh, in the anomaly explorer let me just get out of the way Anomaly Explorer, we will see in the last 24 hours, I got those metrics. Remember that I have separated by service, or was it by container name, something like that. But we'll see the influencers in there. If we click on Anomaly, that's a timeline, if we click on Anomaly, we can see that, for instance, Kubernetes pod memory. My screen is really small, but you can still. Excuse me, can I minimize this? Yep. So, um, Kubernetes pod memory usage node. So the memory usage relative to the node. Uh, it wasn't usually low, but here, if you just click it in, click in here. The one before that, right? So the first one, it is unusually, so it's two times higher. So you see that anomaly triggered in there because the value was 0 0.1 normally, and then it went up 0 0.2, and then it went back again. That model is, uh, it's still trying to, to fit. I don't have a lot of data, but. Uh, you can see that the issues are there already. So memory usage. What else? Let me see the last seven days. If I have something. Uh, not for Kubernetes. Not for the Kubernetes uh, pods, since I'm just focusing on the pods. Maybe at the host level. Let's go back. Normally Explorer. Uh, select all the jobs. And I have the anomaly time. I have all the jobs lined up in here. 
and then I can correlate even the anomalies. So that red one, anomalies are graded from 0 to 100 always. So that's the scale you're seeing in here. That scale obviously will change with time, right? And I can actually just filter for the uh, for the critical ones. Okay, so that's much more interesting. Uh, memory actual used. So uh, the that host is using more memory than before at that specific time. Uh, together with high latency from the APM service, so that's those are unrelated, but they are in their co. <laughs> they are normally unrelated, but they are co. They are they are co-occurring in here in time, so they are co-related, right? System memory actual usage, so memory. So everything went up from that point onward. So uh, at fifteen, I might have done something in there. Who knows? Um, I can see the logs, for instance, right? So from that point, failed transaction rate from the APM. Interesting. Uh, a few minutes before, actually a few hours before, I had a rise in failed transaction rate for product catalog service. And then everything was affected from that point onwards. They might be related, right? And you can inspect that uh, very easily in here. So if we click just on, I've, I've clicked the overall one, and if we click just the APM, we will see that in time, kind of aligned in there, all the services were affected. So that's, there's an issue in there. And uh, you see, there's an issue also in payment service, but you see, just by looking at it, wouldn't see, a high difference in, in latency in this payment service, right? Just by looking at it, it's that series looks pretty erratic. Here's pretty obvious. Had failed transaction. Checkout service didn't fail before that and it started failing from that point onwards, right? Um, all right, so we can, ish, we can surface the issues uh, out of the box for those metrics for latency, for CPU usage, uh, memory usage, right? All that. Good. Now, uh, for me, the most interesting thing we can do in here is that get actual metrics from your service and, uh, and show it in there. So when you let's go back to let's go back to our terminal. When you apply, clear this up. Ugh. When you apply the Helm chart, you get this message in there, right? Saying uh, we have all those UIs. We have the e-commerce UI in here. Just by doing port forward, we will have the e-commerce in there, right? And yeah, I can add products to cart, pay, and all that, right? Place order. So those things, those interactions, um, are generating log messages. And then we can uh, see what log messages are those in, for instance, have it there because I was just trying that. You see, checkout service, let me just remove the graph in that, yeah. So the checkout service, which, which is one of the services that are receiving uh, transactions from the front end, is saying uh, order confirmed, so order confirmation email sent to, payment went through. So, and I, and I have it in there, right? If I just filter for the payment, or maybe payment went through, I will see that um, 
those log messages are supposed to happen frequently, right? I am selling stuff. It's uh, good. How frequently? So how frequent should be those messages? We can have machine learning analyzing this and say, hey, the normal threshold for payments going through my system is X from X to Y. Yeah, right. Um, and then machine learning can alert me if that's going down, right? Let's do the, the same. So I'm just grabbing the, the logs in here by command line, right? But those log messages are already uh, in here. Let me just filter this for the last hour. And So this um, payment went through in the last hour, in 20, let, let's analyze in 24 hours, right? We, in, in, one, in one hour, we had 452 sales, basically, right? And then I can just uh, filter that Kubernetes container name checkout service or whatever other field you want. And then a free text in their payment went through. So that's that's what matters to me. Um, the first step, the first step for actually transforming that to a metric is to save that search in Elasticsearch, and then we are going to open up the machine learning, uh, the machine learning UI, and we're going to create a job, a custom job, single metric, that will analyze that. So we have 11,000. Uh, it will be it will be pretty regular, right? Because those those interactions are being generated automatically at a rate at I guess one per second. Um, but what if that service gets disrupted? The messages and and I, I mean I'm, I'm not talking about completely um, taking down that service. Just like you know, I, I've thought of just killing the containers, just killing the pods. So the service is like intermittent in there. It's like it stop. It will stop uh, processing payments as uh, as frequently. So you will not have zero payments going through. You have a little bit less. And we we'll hope machine learning will uh, get that. That's a use case that I've seen a lot customers using. So I'll just save that search. I'm calling this checkout service issued payments. Good enough. If that has everything I need, uh, if that's a... Uh, if that's a, a good representation of that metric, uh, we can just proceed. So let's go to machine learning. Jobs. And then I'll have my jobs in there. Those are automatics, so you'll you see managed in there. I'm going to create a custom one. And then, checkout service, issued payment. So my served search is in there. So my job, my machine learning job, is restricted to that search. Yeah, and obviously, uh, <laughs> The security part of the stack detected that I have already packet beat in there. I have flow information in there. It's suggesting me to create those. But that's another def. So single metric, which is just a single metric, it's payments going through to keep it simple. I could have a multi-metric. I just have the overall search and then separate by different uh, 
by different field types. And um, Elasticsearch is going to show me a representation of that uh, time series. Yep. Yeah. So have it in there. It's pretty much the same as, as we saw in, um, in the discover. I'll just click use full data because I have a lot more data in there. Probably have hundreds of thousands of log lines. Uh, because this, this is just picking up the last two days. Yeah, and by the way, we could use fro the frozen tier in there, which is uh, a tier that will keep data in buckets, in an S3 bucket, for instance. I'm excluding this. I'm, I'm not using this tier for that demo, but we could. We could use historical data, like archived data, because the frozen tier... Um, Elastic will get restore automatically, restore the data from the frozen tier, use it, and then discard it automatically. You're not using the frozen tier here. Yeah, so I have from November 18 to 24, right? In there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's click next. And the field I'm going to use, I'm just going to use the count because my search is already, it's already uh, restricting, right? Uh, the, 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 it's already filtered. So I'm just going to count how many uh, payments went through because I'm searching for that. Wait for it to. All right. So we have, we have that search metrified in here, in the past a week week or so, right? Look, it's been. I can't. I, I can't just use fifteen minutes. Uh, job ID. Um, ML, uh, I don't know, payments, I've made pros processed, um, come on, check out. Yeah, check out payments. That's a, that's a boring name. Validation, so machine learning is going to validate if my job is not like too heavy or anything. Mostly if the cardinality is not too high, uh, it will not be because it's a single metric, so the cardinality is one. <laughs> it's just it's just a count, right? Over um, over time series. Uh, yeah, and then we're going to create a job. Yeah, good. Let's create our job. And ah, actually, I forgot something. Let me. The job details I have something in here that's oh it's it was already enabled. Uh, if you want to see what's the statistical model behind the job behind the time series, you can enable model plot. You, it will take a, a little bit more data uh, because we need to store that information. But in order to see actually see the thresholds and how the model is behaving uh, over time. Uh, it's it's good to enable model plot. You can actually use that gated index as well if you want to use that index specifically to I don't know plot it somewhere else. Okay, so next, so it was already validated. Uh, create job. Right. 
Right, so you see that the model is being constructed right in front of us. You have that. Oh, all right, that was pretty quick. Okay, so we have several anomalies in there already reported. So you see that the, the light blue behind the time series, it's the, the thresholds that uh, the model is selling us, <clears throat> this time series has. Uh, and, then we have, and then we have the anomalies in there. We can go uh, check those anomalies out. And, and the, in the anomaly explorer. Right, by, by default, um, this job is not picking up new data. It's just, it was just that time frame. You just click start job running in real time. It will be picking up new, uh, new metrics as, as it goes and click it here, view results. Okay. So we have precisely what we wanted without, without, I, I didn't actually need, <laughs> needed to, I was, I was thinking of stopping the pod in order to have less, uh, uh, less payments going through, but it looks like that happened naturally for some reason. Uh, but you see the upper bounds was 161, lower bounds 113, and then we had 97, right? Um, and that's a custom metric, nothing to do with CPU, nothing to do with memory, all those classic things. It's a metric that I am defining for my business, right? Uh, by the way, I can only alert or can only consider low counts if I'm interested in alerting if I'm getting a service degradation, right? Uh, but by default, you have both high counts and low counts. You might use this to, I don't know, pop up champ champagne or something. <laughs> so, uh, and we can correlate those anomalies uh, to other uh, to other metrics to the CPU to the classic metrics and APM as well, right? Uh, so that's uh, and you have and you have in here you have the breakdown in there. So uh, how many times lower or how many times higher that metric is compared to um, to the threshold? You see that the model is started high and then it will be fitting uh, uh, as it goes, right? Don't have a lot of data, I have just three data, three three days in here. Uh, customers usually, I don't know, uh, use more than three months, maybe six months worth of data in order to construct a very precise model um, on top of really any metric that you want really um, and yeah we can do forecast in this case uh, in this case since my model is my model is pretty linear the forecast it will be also linear in here but if you have if we had something more periodic we would have this 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 thing also following along with the with the periodic uh, nature of the time series, right? Okay, that was it for issue detection. Rather long video, but um, hope you're liking it, and hope you you are following along. See you next time.